Hey guys, it's Andre from the High Performance Academy. We're here with BC from BC Moto Engineering and we're here to talk to him about the brand new Hyundai Genesis Coupe that he's just built for Hyundai on their stand at SEMA here. So BC, thanks for taking the time to talk to us. My pleasure. This car is amazing. Can you, you can you tell us, first of all, it's a naturally aspirated car yes. as it comes out of the factory. Absolutely. You've turbocharged it. Yes. How did that go? It went very well, but not without challenge. There were a lot of things that we had to modify. First time we get an engine, we have to really obtain data to determine the potential of the vehicle or potential of the engine. First thing you want to do, of course, is flow the head and study the valve train as well. Hyundai did a very good job with the crate engine to create some technology that allowed us to have a very strong foundation like six bolt, six bolt mains and direct actuation of the valve train with buckets via the camshafts. And the buckets are not hydraulic but solid buckets, which is very nice. But simple things like lightweight valve springs, a 60 PSI, I'm, I'm sorry, 20 PSI uh, or 20 pounds spring pressure at the seat was ideal for natural aspiration but once you add boost where now the valve spring has the additional need to overcome the resistance of the valves, the resistance of the, of the, valve, the weight of the valve train and now added pressure we had to upgrade that so that's one of the first things we had to do. Cam control also extremely important pose a little bit of a challenge but what's really interesting is the gasoline direct injection. The GDI system was one that comes factory with the engine I didn't have the time to be able to decode the ECU and try and find a very creative means of controlling the GDI, so I had to eliminate that and go to port injection. Okay, I just want to talk a little bit about the GDI or yes. direct injection. That, that's becoming basically commonplace now Absolutely. on performance engines. Do you see some significant advantages with direct injection over port injection? Absolutely. You know, the manufacturers are posed with a challenge of being able to create power and couple that with economy and reliability. Now the great thing about gasoline direct injection is because of its placement, because of how it's atomized in the combustion chamber, you can get away with very lean stoichiometric ratios, very lean ratios even at idle, very lean ratios even in, 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 in high, high throttle, high load situations, and not expire the engine and not have any challenges. The only caveat is that you end up experiencing high fuel pressures anywhere from 800 to 1200 PSI. So from a tuning perspective, that's very interesting. And the pumps that are used also are pulse width modulated. Mm -hmm. So if you think about pulse width modulation that you have to deal with with something as simple as a boost control solenoid, you now have to deal with that with pumps. And it's not an easy protocol to, I would say, break down or reverse engineer. It takes time. Would you say this is one of the reasons, the complexities of that system is one of the reasons we still aren't seeing a lot of aftermarket ECUs with GDI support? I, I agree. However, it's something that has to happen. With companies like ours and other companies out there and other major manufacturers of engine management systems, you start to see some interest and some, some tinkering around with that. So it's a matter of time. But one good thing is it will separate the men from the boys when it comes to tuning. So for tuning solutions, those who are not comfortable with GDI will, probably will never touch it. But those who are always on the forefront of tuning technology would embrace it like we are and will continue to make greater strides and be able to take full advantage of those systems and the advantages they, they recommend or they provide. Sure, agreed, agreed. Okay, so let's get back to the engine. So okay. you, you had some work to do there. Yes. You've changed the pistons and basically yes. built the engine. Absolutely. How, how much boost are you pushing through this engine now? 27 PSI. Wow, yes. that's that's some serious boost. It's I can okay. It's okay. It's actually not so bad because we've done some crazier things, but because of the head flow and the dynamics of the engine, above and beyond it being a very strong foundation, that is the boost I required with the airflow of the turbos I had to generate the power. Okay, so let's talk, uh, talk about those turbo chargers. Yes. You've gone with a twin turbo setup. Can yes. you tell us what turbos are fitted? Sure. They are known as the BTX6162. Billet turbos on the compressor side, 61 millimeter billets to be exact. The exhaust side has 62 millimeter Inconel exhaust wheels. The turbine housings on the exhaust are 0.63 AR. I wanted something that can actually provide a good enough spool so it can be an enjoyable, quote unquote, street vehicle, but also have the potential of not choking up top to provide us the flow to create big power, horsepower numbers. So let's talk about that horsepower. Yes. What, what's it producing on the 27 PSI? You know, I'm very excited to share with you that it made to the wheels 859 horsepower, which yields with about a 19% drivetrain loss of 1022. So I'm very excited about that. And there's more to come. That's just the tip of the iceberg. That's a seriously powerful rear wheel drive coat. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, with that much power, let's yes. talk about the drivetrain. Is it a challenge to hold that together, or is the Genesis uh, gearbox and differential strong enough from the factory? That's an excellent question. On the dynamometer, the gearbox and drivetrain assembly did extremely well. The drive shaft, even from very simple evaluation, from factory seemed very weak. We did upgrade it with a carbon fiber unit from drive shaft shop. 
So the drive shaft itself up to par. Rear end, even though it has a limited slip differential and the gearbox, I am still evaluating. So I have some more data after the SEMA show. We're going to go to the track, beat up a little bit more. We did some preliminary track testing, but I'll be honest with you, I did have to turn down the boost a little bit to bring it to about 620 horsepower so we won't expire anything on the drivetrain. But it's to be evaluated. I'll have data very soon. Now, you're no stranger to the drag strip anyway, no, BC. Really. Can you give us your best guess at what this car might be capable of with a set of decent tyres on the back of it? With tyres and ideal traction, this vehicle will get into the single digit mark very easily. I wouldn't be surprised if it runs mid to low nines, possibly even eights when everything is sorted out. That's some serious performance from a car you can still drive on the street. The car has a lot of potential, it really does. Let's just talk back about the electronics package okay. a little bit. You said you had the AEM ECU. Yes. What's the rest of the electronics package? Well, the AEM Infinity is, the, is really the core. It's the core brain of the system. But as you move away from that, we have some very nice Denso um, coils, which are smart coils itself. We're, I'm very kind or very, I should say, honored to have partnered with a company like Rywire, who pr provided a motorsports harness to really put everything together. Above and beyond that, a race pack dash really allows the driver myself to have access to all the important parameters that I deem appropriate. Everything from um, a mile per hour to boost settings, air intake temperatures, water temperatures, fuel pressures, oil pressures, you name it. So I have that great data system at, at hand. And it communicates via CAN bus. Above and beyond that, an AEM boost control solenoid is, in, is, in, is uh, employed. And all of the sensors from air intake to even water, water pressure, I mean air pressure, I mean, oh, sorry, air pressure being map sensor, of course. Um, all the sensors are from AEM as well. So I do have an AEM package. I'm a huge advocate of their, of their uh, electronics. And it's something I use exclusively in all my cars from anything from a Hyundai to a Porsche to a Honda. Great, look, that's really interesting. Thank you for taking the time My to talk pleasure. to us, BC. I can't wait to see what sort of times this Thank produces you. when you get to the strip. Thanks Good very much. Well. My pleasure. Thanks so much. For online tuning courses, visit learntotune.com.